Twitter been, 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 been around since the beginning of time. Yeah, well, you know, Elon Musk might run into the ground. That may be so, but Twitter will last. Well, it's Twitter in some form. I'm sure somebody will do a new version. Uh, maybe, maybe not. It's, it's, um, it's interesting for like the. You can't I take can it. give a fuck less. Only thing I'm happy for about Twitter is I was able to find my my challenge family here. That's uh, right, and, and, and not just L, not just LWC, but you know, just the whole um, challenge community. Because yep. um, none of my friends, our family, really watched the challenge like that. Uh, it was just I? me, and then I find challenge Twitter, and it's just like, wow, look at all these fucking psychos just like me, and I fucking. Uh, I you know what's funny is one of my friends, one of my friends came just listened to the podcast because she just wanted to see because I was like, you should hear us. We're fucking stupid or ridiculous on this show. We and don't. she's like, Liz, seriously, <laughs> had no idea what you guys were talking about. But I listened to like 40 minutes of the show. <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, we got a couple of messages because, you know, Spotify is doing this rap stuff. I had several people who hit me up and they showed me pictures of like we're one of the most listened to podcasts. And that is just. That is just humbling, to say to say the least. So you know, Shannon, if you out there, OKC, you out there, uh, just some of the guys who sent me uh, screenshots and let me know how much they listen to us. Uh, thank you for that. Appreciate that. So big shout out, Shannon, to y'all. trying to put some evil out on me. I see. Nah, <laughs> nah we, we, we all Don't know. Be no I, I read that, <laughs> Shannon. <laughs> we, we all know. So. You supposed to. You supposed to read it, uh, Becky. Come on now. Um, Whatever. <laughs> But you know, you know, so <laughs> let me tell you guys some funny shit. Oh God! Have any of you guys heard of Hinge? Yes. Yes. It's a yes. dating hookup app. Yes. Right. So I hate it. I hate so, it. So, so listen. Never been on it. Uh, all I right. So, so listen. <laughs> I I came up on Tinder. Shocker. And Tinder is great. It depends Who's on which. Not on Tinder. <laughs> first off, uh, today we are drinking uh, Johnny Walker Black Label. Let Again. me give me some of that, homie. We're drinking so, water. Uh, pour, pour some for the homies. Oh, no doubt. One day I got to get wasted and do this podcast. That would make I'm no sense. If you I, did. I used to do this I'm podcast dying. super wasted, but I know I you f- did. I was I've, here for all of them. <laughs> I don't. I don't really drink heavy anymore. But um, so I was gonna so, say, out of what almost what was 150 episodes, I've missed maybe nine. two. <laughs> so, at the recommendation of somebody else, I downloaded Hinge. And I'm not gonna lie, it was kind of fl- first off. I've, this is only the second day I've had it. And on you, the first day, hitting you up, ain't they? Yeah, on the first day, I'm getting there. You go, bam, just <laughs> bam, 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 bam. I was like, holy shit! But you know, all because you're getting a lot of likes doesn't mean it's exactly what you're looking for. But so you're in out. California, though, so it's totally different. Ba- I mean, it's a nice feeling, though. Bam, 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 bam. He yeah. feels hey, cool. appreciated. Yeah, it's, 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 it's really nice. I mean. But. <laughs> I've been having trouble sleeping. And so some days I begin up at like 3 30, 4 o'clock in the morning. And if I'm up, I just go to the gym. So that's what I've been doing. Um, that shit kind of caught up to me. So I match with this girl, we text back, and we're texting all day. And it's a fucking vibe. Like it's oh, not shit. a vibe since like uh since the uh earlier this year. Right. Time out. Since um the the nice young lady from earlier uh <laughs> earlier this year. Uh, but it was a vibe. Totally good. Mm-hmm. But this is one of the days I woke up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm fucking dog tired. I was at work all day. And she's kind of giving me clues. She's like, well, what time do you get off? I'm like, oh, I get off at this time. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm saying. Mind you, we already made plans to meet up uh, next weekend. And right. I have availability. I, right. like, I just got off. And so she's like, All right, text, <laughs> literally te- or figuratively. She's like, yo, text me when you get home. <laughs> so I get home. Um, and I hit her up. I was like, yeah, I just took some z quill. I might just like fucking 7.30. I'm like, I just took some z quill. I'm going to knock out soon. I miss that time zone out there. <laughs> and she was just like, all right. And so I pass out and I get like, I get a couple of texts when it was like, hey, what are you doing right now? What are you doing right now? I miss all of these texts. I don't even see them until I get to the gym the next day. And it's like, oh, hey, what you doing? Hey, what are you doing now? I was like, oh, and mind you, it's like five o'clock in the morning, so I can't say, oh, this sorry. Stage five clinger? Well, no, but I think it was like somewhat of a clinger. Well, it was it was like, yo, slide through, you know. Right. <laughs> um, 
so I waited, I waited till it was a little bit later in the day. And it was like eight, nine o'clock in the morning. I'm like, hey, sorry. Uh, I, I passed out almost immediately uh, when I got home or whatever. Um, and we made plans to meet up later on today. And so no response for like an hour. I'm hollering. No response for a second hour. I go back on the hand. We're unmatched. I'm I'm like, get the f- Get the fuck, yo. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, oh shit. Like, yeah, you can't it? take that serious. I don't take that serious. No you way. can't. You, you really, can't. You really can't. Not to mention the other girl I'm talking to, I am fucking afraid of. What? Like, like I'm, afraid ter- of? I'm, I'm terrified of her. I, I think I might have Whoa. to ghost it, even though I've never ghosted anybody. Why are you terrified? Of? She's, she's aggressive. And I don't mind aggressive women, but don't be aggressive towards me. Well, aggressive in what way? Just, just aggressive and kind of combative. Oh, so she's yeah. down to fight. She wants to. She wants to fight. Or I wouldn't say is she more of a fight. Fight. Nah, She's more of a. I know what he's talking about. Yeah, you, you like know what that, I'm talking yeah. about. You're like, yo, yeah. you're a little bit. You don't got to be tough with me, right? I was gonna say, like, would you consider me aggressive? <laughs> no, no, not really. Uh-uh. No. Listen, I'm, I'm gonna have to give up on these apps. I'm gonna have to just go out there and start meeting yeah, people. You really I don't really want to, to man. Cause I, I already know that. It, yeah, I already you, know you, there's right. a beautiful girl out there already for me. Yeah, my eye already on it. Just go for it. Just, I, I think you talking about in person. I'm, my bad. Oh I'm yeah, no, she li- she lives <laughs> across the country. So yeah, uh, don't you hate those? Yeah. Don't you hate those out of the country type of talk? Not out the country. I'm not going to Costa Rica yeah. on a boys well, trip. Well, on <laughs> the other side the of the country. country is almost out of the country. Mine's, mine's is somewhere in Russia. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He's trying to get um, himself a Russian okay. ride. Oh. So before we get into the episode, uh, also- Just got to mail them. Got to get a mail order one. Before we, got, before we get into this episode, uh, I also got spanked on uh, YouTube for some of the language that I have used. For what? Spanked? Now, for yeah, the I, got, language. I got called out. What? By who? By people on YouTube. The fuck? About Wait. some of the language I've been using. So what's the what's the problem? I don't see no problem with. What? No, but they did. Which and language? I. The B word. The B word. Um, yeah. Oh, we calling the ladies the B word. See, see I, I, I tried to warn you. Yeah, he did. That that first was off, not first the off, best terminology. Listen, first off. I didn't get into podcasting so people could tell me what I can say and what I can do. Okay? Right. Talk to them. Talk but, to But, but, they seemed like nice young ladies yes. and their feelings were hurt. And that's not what um, I was trying to do. Plus, yeah, you can't, you can't, I'm better you, than that. And plus, I don't, right. I don't refer to women like that and, you know, outside of the podcast. There's no need to refer to them as that inside of this podcast. So, I hear you and we apologize if, I apologize if I said something that hurt you. And we'll put an end to it. Simple as that. The best way you can apologize is change your behavior. That's which right. Which is fucking hard. All right. What else do we have to get into? Uh, oh, yeah. Let's get, So two more things I want to get into before we get into this episode. The Challenge Australia apparently is doing so bad, they moved it to pretty much a garbage channel that nobody watches. Really? Because nobody watched The Challenge Australia. Hmm. Bum, bum, bum. Not a surprise because I saw the cast. I wasn't impressed. So, well, think about it. A lot of people from the UK, we don't know. But here's the fucked up thing: you got the challenge UK. The challenge has a plethora of talent to pull from. Right. Why aren't they there? That's what I. I, I, I I'm, well, I'm I, I think they did a UK version though. Yes, yes, but not with the UK people we know. Oh. Well, it's because we know them and they want to bring in new faces. How are these new fucking faces doing? Not that great. Because Case is a fan favorite. The authenticity, uh, I mean, authentic, I can't even say. Authenticity. That, there we go. You. <laughs> thank you. It's There's gone. There's a ten set, $10 word. It's gone. It's gone. That's gone. That's no longer exists. Authenticity? Yes, authenticity. To whatever you just said. Authenticity. <laughs> Jesus. Yes, thank you. You just said right. it for me. So It's the accent. He can't say it because he has the southern accent? accent going on. <laughs> I'm from St. Louis, okay? I, I, I can't help where I was born, okay? I'm not, I'm not saying. I'm just saying you have an accent. So, the last thing I wanted to talk about is this, um, this thing that I've seen on Vevmo that a, that a friend of mine sent me 
uh, Blood Money 47. He said, uh, somebody posted in Vevmo about wonder why MTV gave a racist like Jordan Redemption, but not Cara and Pauly. And Pink Rose responds, because Jordan is easy to work with, extremely respectful, and didn't give them an ultimatum thinking he was irreplaceable. Jordan also knew how to keep a low profile and allow stuff to die down to, to die down, and knew how to clean his image. The other two have done the opposite in the past few years. Perfect example today. And I guess Paulie said something on on IG or Twitter. I didn't see it. Twitter. Uh, I saw the comment afterwards. Said, maybe in the future they will be cast, but if her or her boyfriend could continue to do stupid stuff, it's not as likely. What are yeah, our she- feelings on that statement? He made, uh, I know what Polly did. He made some sort of comment about Johnny's uh, um, shrimp. <laughs> His penis? Shrimp on the Bobby. Uh, and how he couldn't, how she, just basically how he couldn't get it done for like um, Mariah. And then he tagged Morgan, Angela, and somebody else I can't remember. But I guess Angela also responded, also said she was going to talk shit about Polly too, but I don't know. Is but it was basically, it was talking shit about, it was talking shit about Johnny as per usual, but he's then been, everybody, all the, the girls got offended because, you know, they boned oh, him. He tagged a whole bunch of girls. Yeah. Yeah. So as, it, as they're right. Um, I don't know from off the top of my head, that doesn't really sound too crazy, but that statement kind of set with me because it feels true. I mean, I said it before. Um, Cara did double down. She did basically say it's Polly and me or nothing. Basically just saying that if they're not going to cast him, they can't cast her because of the situation that happened. Whether or not it was accurate or true that Polly was indeed blacklisted by a bunch of cast members who went out of their way to try and get him out. Or not. I think Kara doubled down on it. And of course, yeah, she defended her guy, but she lost her gig. So, I mean, they're not losing money. Apparently, from what I can see, they're they're still no, thriving they, and, and making plenty of money. Yeah, so, and, and they seem fine. But, you know, especially about Jordan. Jordan has been on this whole clean up his image. He took a couple seasons off. And, my, and y'all tried to play me when I told y'all that's what MTV told them. That like, oh, Malik doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, that little bitch-ass podcast has something to say about that, too. Oh, he didn't, didn't talk about... Fuck them. But also, I said, they told Jordan, take a couple of seasons off, clean up his image, get in line. And I said the same thing about Taylor Selfridge. I said, they said they booted her off the show. They said, Corey had to keep her in check, keep her good, and bought back. And look, Malik was right. Wait, is Taylor back on yeah, the Yeah, she's back on Team Mom. I mean, y'all, to be real, I mean. I said this like two years ago. Well, Tina, I'm going to put it like this. I'm going to put it like this. Cora's one of the most dominant females in uh, MTV challenge history. MTV, you should have been brought Cora Maria back on. Polly does not have to be attached to that technically because if she, she says. He, she, if she's she the one that's putting the, the, she made her name in the challenge, not Polly. Polly, but just he's the one. But she's the one putting her foot down, saying that she doesn't want to do it. That's or she that, or that they're mistreating him. Whether or not it's true or not, that's what it's making it seem that she's basically saying, if you don't fuck with Polly, you don't fuck with me. That's fine, but from from my understanding, they they get paid very well. You know, I mean, I don't know what the problem is. If you're going to make money, go and make your money and just suck it up and just do your thing. That's all I'm I saying. I agree. Said. I mean, you got people that are struggling out here trying to make a living, but you talk, no, I don't want to go on um, because such and such. Come on, man. You didn't build your image for this long. You spent majority of your life on TV. Come on. Just let's go make the money and let's go ahead and continue to uh, uh, amp you up. Okay. No I mean, I, I, I feel sad, but I don't see her coming back. I don't see them running the risk of bringing her back. She does continue to say things. He continues to say things. And like you said, I mean, Jordan has been on a kind of a campaign to kind of clean up his image. I mean, he did that and, stuff. And I think didn't he do a bunch of stuff in the re- Ukraine, too? Like, I, I, I swear he brought, like, food or some shit like that to the Ukraine. Like, he was... 
He's been trying to yeah, doing good yeah, deeds, yeah, I guess, best Ukraine. way of saying it. Ukraine, I still Amanda, don't Ukraine like him ain't as none a- of my black ass business. Well, I've been talking, so, <laughs> like I was telling y'all, I do. I have been, you know, conversating with somebody from Russia, but that's been, I want to say, we have been talking for the past two years. Tell so, me, you was he's dead literally, ass? He's no, literally going literally to bring a Russian bride. S- no, listen to me. Yes. I don't know. I don't know how it happened. But oh, you, you, I started the nigga, conversation. You know how it <laughs> no, I, I really you saw don't. a hot Russian chick uh-huh. on we, IG, and you did. slid into them DMs. I, Wait, yes, IG or Tinder? I do. No, IG. I, I, I slid in IG from across IG, the world. IG. You can set it for anywhere. You can actually set it for anywhere uh, oh. for your information. But anyway, but yeah, wow. I, I slide into uh, DMs. I'm not. Hey, send me a pic in the chat. I'm going to. I want to take a look. I, I, I want to think about it. I think about it. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? <laughs> All right. I'm going to go ahead and bring the episode in. Uh, big shout out to the people who called me out on YouTube. Uh, big shout out to Shannon. Big shout out to uh, OKC. Big shout out to... Uh, uh, who else should we give a shout out to? Oh, big shout out to the God, Gamer Vav. Always holding it down. And big shout out Pink hmm. Rose, who I've actually never had a correspondence with, ever. I think anybody's had a real conversation. Well... We may have. Oh, oh, time out. Big shout out the Unbothered Podcast and the Unbothered Facebook group. We're in a lot of those challenge groups, but this is our home. We love it there. They support us from Jump and we support them. Uh, If you get a chance, make sure you go follow them. We fucks with them. We love them. And make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Guys, ready to kick this episode off? Do it. What's really good, Posters? Welcome to another episode of Love, War, Challenges. I am MTV Malik. He is Robert Stewart Jr. She is Becky at Giftmaster Bex. What's really good? Gang, 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 gang. Today on Why Does Everybody Hate Amber B? We got her uh, celebrating her, her win and her and Michelle, you know, solidified their alliance. Um, and... During this whole A block, not a whole lot happened. But we see this thing with Nelson and Norris, you know, they're training, he's teaching her how to swim, all that, yada, yada, yada. And at this point of the game, just in this A block, a thought comes to me. And I'm just like, Nelson has a good. He has a pretty strong alliance, a main alliance. He has a backup alliance because he is working a little bit with the rookies. Uh, He has a strong partner and he's winning dailies. And the only thing in my head at this point is just like, how is he going to fuck this up? He's going to fuck this up. <laughs> we already and know he's going to. I even written it down in my notes. I'm like, damn, like, this is a good thought. Uh, he's definitely going to fuck it up. Uh, we then get, uh, you know, a fucking Anissa giving another Jordan hero pitch, which, I, man, I mean, they go so fucking hard for that guy. It is fucking uh, sickening. Um, but the only thing I want to talk about in the A block is Nelson guilt tripping Fessy and to get a vote for him in case he wins. Basically, he says like, yeah, never betrayed you. So, you know, that comes up. Uh, what did you guys think about Nelson's gameplay at this point? I thought it was one of the smartest things he could do. Like, hey, motherfucker, you already fucked me over once. You better not do that shit again. And he's kind of just making sure that if Fessy, who hasn't won shit all, all season, is going to make sure he looks out for him. Uh, what were some of you guys' take away from... Fessy's guilt trip or anything else from the A block. Robert, why don't you start us off? Because Becky always likes to go first. Thank you. Okay, so look, um, Nelson, smart play. I think it was very smart to bring that pa- that pass back up because I noticed that because I was like, well, he's got a point because number one, you threw him in and you claim you say y'all friends and he brought it up and said, hey, don't let that happen again because if you it do, it's going to be all hell that breaks loose. And Becky. I think it was a, I think it was funny more than anything else. Cause you know, Nelson ain't going to do shit. He's trying to say, Oh, I'm going to do this. Oh, I'm going to do that. No, you're not. No, you're not. You've gone and proved over and over again that people can keep stabbing you in the back and fucking you over. And what does Nelson do? Oh man, I had your back. I thought we were friends and crying in the fucking corner. But does he do anything back? No. But that's about it. I was just like, okay, Nelson, talk about how you could do something that, no, you're not going to do because you don't have the balls to do it. 
So, and I like Nelson, but he ain't got the balls to do it. He ain't balls. He got the balls to strike back. Nope. He would have struck back a long time ago. I don't think he really had he's a lot of opportunity. Friend. He's my friend. Yeah, that motherfucker sent your ass home. Yeah, but he's your bestie. So, let's go ahead and move on You know who didn't send to- you home? Corey. Sorry. So let's go ahead and move on to today's daily. Today's daily is called Double Trouble. Basically, this is a car jumping uh, speed run. This is one of the dailies. We've seen a lot of iterations of this come before, but I love these kind of dailies. These are the kind of dailies that the challenge should be known for. I don't think we really get uh, enough of them. Now, Jordan and Anissa eke out the win, but let's go ahead and talk about some of our favorite moments from today's daily. Uh, Becky, what were some of your favorite moments, some of your biggest dislikes? What was it about today's daily that really had you going? I was really disappointed in Horacio. You know, I, you know, for someone who's who plays soccer, you should think that that has someone with really great balance, speed, agility. And it just seems like he was having some trouble today. I don't know what, if he got in his own head or if he's just, but yeah, no, he, he was disappointing today. Um, Unfortunately, I have to give big props to Jordan because that motherfucker is a beast and he flew through that shit like crazy. Um, And even like just seeing the people flop over and knock the things out and then they'd end up disqualified. I was like, oh, that sucked. But I thought it was fun. I thought it was entertaining to see people fly almost like Peter Pan when they got like thrown off the... (laughs) thrown off of the cars so it was kind of funny but i mean it was a good overall one absolutely rob i enjoyed the uh, uh daily definitely for sure um i was disappointed in nelson's performance i mean you're a veteran come on you can't be dropping the key and disqualifying your team that's what i i was like what's what's going on nelson you you supposed to be an og uh i was surprised that you said that about horatio becky but he ha- he's not used to flying on cars and stuff. It's a who different the fuck ball is? game. Yeah, I mean, some people are though, because you know, people who actually do it on the regular, like Johnny Bananas, Jordan, they used to that stuff, you know. Uh, but Harash, this is first time. Just give him a break because none of that stuff is easy. I didn't you know? say it was so, terrible. I just said I, yeah. I, you know, I was a little disappointed you just, because you're he's right, a little disappointed. But I he's, went he's been so good overall, and he really could have yeah. killed this challenge if he had just it, kept it, his balance. I, I feel that that part with Olivia and Horatio, they were doing good at first, and I think he just got in, in his own way. Because you got moving vehicles. You got to jump from car to car. That's kind of a uh, a scary thing. But uh, once you get used to it, especially if you got a cable strapped on yourself, you should be cool. Um, other than that, uh, with Johnny and Bananas. I mean, not Johnny, Bananas. Why did I say that? Johnny bananas and Nani. Bananas and Nani. <laughs> I wasn't surprised. I thought uh, Bananas was going to come out with the win, but I wasn't uh, surprised that Jordan and Nisa got it because they are the vets, the true vets of the game. There was a lot to like about today's daily. Um, one, of, one, it was just a good daily. A good, solid daily, action-packed. Uh, Two, the cinematography on today's daily was really well. You got the overhead shots of them running. You got the shots of uh, inside the car. I thought it was beautifully shot. Everything looked so good and so excited. And it built a lot of it built a lot of tension. And anybody who wasn't doing nothing exciting just got kind of pushed into, you know, the montage of performance. I wasn't super disappointed in Horacio for rookies on the first season. These are the kind of dailies that really get you tripped up. Um, I was really impressed by the teams that did uh, really well. Uh, Jay um, and um, Bananas and um, Jordan. So I thought they all did really well. Um, so I wasn't super. I wasn't super disappointed in Horacio. Was a little bit super. Um, you're right. Nelson was Nelson DQ and wasn't great. And Kenny DQs and we haven't seen jack shit come out of this guy yeah. all season long. Who? And, exactly. And it was super hilarious when Devin completely overshot, uh, you know, overshot the, the station and was flying around like Peter Pan. So Jordan and Anissa eke out the win. They look great while doing it, especially because Anissa didn't have a whole lot to do besides climb out the car and hand it to him. So let's go ahead and move on to 
deliberations and nominations. So Jordan and Anissa goes in, and it's it, it's really not that hard for them to figure out who they want to put in. Uh, of course, off the top of the head, it's going to be Jay and Michelle. It comes down to Nelson Norris, Olivia, Olivia and Horacio, and they're kind of stuck on who they're going to do. Amber and Chauncey are Fessy and Mariah. Now, if you didn't Jordan and Anissa's shoes, who are you going with? Fessy and Mariah. Yes, 100% Fessy. Fessy. It, because it's a Fessy? stronger it's a stronger team. It just makes sense to throw them in. Plus, I don't think there's any real love loss between Fessy and Jordan. Let's uh, just be honest Because there. he has sex with his girlfriend? <laughs> Uh, no, yeah. <laughs> mass would be uh, his well, ex girlfriend. No. Well, mass would be oh, no. he yeah, makes it to the final. Yeah, basically. Who? Uh, Fessy. I don't think anybody's worried about him in a final. I think they're just trying to get his big ass out of there. I think you're hundred percent right. Um, I I don't like the fact that Amber was disregarded as like she her and Chauncey aren't really a threat. Uh, I thought Fessy and and I, I thought Fessy and Mariah would one hundred percent be the be the much better choice. So we get down to it. They're a stronger team overall. They have a more likelihood of winning. Oh, yeah, 100%. 100%. Let's get to the interrogations. So the interrogation comes down. Jay Michelle comes down. And I love the fucking vibe that this interrogation has. Jay comes in. He's just like, oh, imagine us being here. I thought the banter between him and Jordan was really, really dope. And then it all, and then this cool vibe gets all fucked up when Michelle tries to cut a deal. Now, this deal that Michelle tries to cut, uh, if you was Jordan and Anissa, do you take it? No. No. Why not? Because they tried to cut a deal before already, and they backed out of both deals. Yeah, mm. plus you you looking at two survivor cats. I'm not keeping nobody in this game that says survivor behind, a, behind their name. The, the, the bottom line is Jay and Michelle have both proven to Jordan and Anissa that they will be their vote if they want to... One hundred percent. I thought Michelle shouldn't even have tried to cut a deal. I was just like, you just look kind of silly, um, you know, trying to cut a deal at this point. Like everything is kind of already set in stone. You already threw them in twice, so that's what time it is. Now the now the uh, Horacio and Olivia one, I had a very touching moment with Jordan, which is like, no, you're here because you're good. You guys perform. Like you're here because you're good. And let me tell you something. This is the shit that bugs me about Jordan and his, and you know, this uh, new good Jordan tour that I dislike oh so very much. It's hard to tell if he's actually being genuine or, he, or is he still doing this to clean up his image. Now, I already said that MTV told him what he had to do. And it seems like he's doing that. And Pink Rose has already confirmed that he put out a intentional, an intentional movement and an with the intention to clean up his image. This is why, to me, all of this, every time he does shit like this, it comes off as super insincere. So, here's my take on it. It's both. I see him, and I see the TV side of it. So, he's playing both. You seeing him, and you seeing his TV side, okay? He's got two sides. He's got the side you see outside of the show, and you you see the side that you see on the show, okay? So, since I already met him a few times and I've gotten to know his personality a little bit, I'm going to say you've seen both sides. Yes, he is being genuine. That's when, did this, when did this become the Jordan Dick Riding Podcast? This ain't no Dick when? Riding Podcast. When? Look, I, look, I, brother, when? He's look, the only brother. one riding. No, I'm no, because, because especially when he looked... Olivia and Horacio in the eye, which is like, no, you're here because you're good. I felt that shit. And I don't like this feeling of turning the corner on Jordan. I've hated him for so long. But you I mean, got, I don't like it. I, I, I don't I, like him, and I probably will never like him. Period. I don't know. I can't really convince y'all because y'all haven't really sat down and talked to him one I don't have any to one inclination, I haven't sat down and talked to, to him 97% any of listen, the cast. Listen, I didn't have a desire to meet Jordan when I first met him, okay? That, I'm good on that. Seriously, I didn't. I, I was the same way. But after having a in-depth conversation, he changed my mind, okay? That's how that happened. Or he's an actor, and yeah. he can play actor? up his fans just no, as much. No, no, don't, don't play with me, uh, Malik. Don't play with me. Don't <laughs> play with me. with that shit. <laughs> don't, don't play with me. 
Don't play with me like that. Oh, I mean, God. I'm just saying that guy has acting credits to his his, yeah, uh, his moniker, yeah. and yeah, he, he can do. he can play a role yeah, as we have seen, and he can play it well. I've seen but his the, real let me, personality let me, outside of the show. Let me just say show. something because at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. I don't know this person. I don't think I'll ever know this person. It's not like we're friends. It's not like I have a real true blue idea of who he is. I just see who he is on TV and I don't appreciate it. I don't like it, nor would I want it or that energy around me. There's quite a few of those cast members who I would stay as far away from, even if I saw them in an event as possible. But um, I do think that two things can be true. I think he is a portion of sincere because I think he does like Olivia. And I think he has respect for Horacio. He knows that they're new. He knows that they're fresh. He sees them going in constantly. And he had to deal with this too on his first season. Jordan and Marlon were constantly being thrown in on their first season. So maybe he kind of feels a little bit of a kinship with them or even makes it kind of feel a little bit more close to, to home. So I think he sincerely believes that he is encouraging to them. I mean, you see him being encouraging even towards um, Amber because Amber seems to really kind of flock to his energy as well. So maybe he is to some degree and to some people a decent guy. But again, people get what they get from Jordan and it is what it is. But I can, I, I think that a portion of it is playing up his let me be the new father of the show. Let me help guide you. To get this role, older like the elder statements role that CT now has, maybe he's trying to fill that role and possibly get the good side of what CT got. Let's be honest, once CT started filling this father figure role, a lot of things changed and a lot of people's opinions changed. That's what I have a feeling he's trying to do, which is smart on his point. But I also feel like a portion of it is sincere. So moving on, after the deliberation... And, of course, Fessy gets voted in because he's going to be the biggest threat. And, you know, I'm surprised we never got a real set sit-down between Nelson. I mean, I'm not Nelson. I'm surprised we didn't get a real sit-down between Fessy and Jordan. Just like, hey, you know, I just wanted to talk to you about how I banged your fiancé, you know, on a fucking riverboat <laughs> in Turks <laughs> well, and Caicos. Fessy is a lot of things, but he's not trying to... To jump in front of that. I'm just saying <laughs> that would be a track. great conversation to see inside of a challenge house. But Fessy feels some kind of way because, you know, him and Anissa was partnering up in the past. He felt like there was some kinship. Oh, boo. And he felt some kind of way about getting thrown, being put up for elimination. And so Fessy's stomping around his room, kind of talking shit. And you know what, what thought struck me at that time? Fessy is talking about Anissa, how Nelson should be talking about Fessy. Like, 100% of the time, no, I don't owe you nothing. No, I don't got to protect you. You know, you made it easy for me. And I'm just like, you know, it sounds like, it's not like Nelson should talk about you like that. Like, same old shit. So after that, we get to club night. And absolutely nothing happens. Nothing happens. Same old Fessy feeling some kind of way about Anissa. I love the fact that Anissa called him out for making a face because she felt him turn towards the camera. And she, she said knew what point. he was doing. <laughs> she knew what he was doing. I feel like Anissa makes a lot of connections in the house, and I feel like not a lot of them are really genuine. Well, I mean, everybody's called Anissa like a floater, very heavy on the politics, and just... But she's I mean, terrible at politicking. I feel like at some point, everybody has called Anissa a friend and an enemy. Flip-flop. Yeah, facts. Facts. Straight flip-flop. And that's that's kind of her shtick. She that's the thing. But at the end of the day, she doesn't owe Fessy anything. Like, period. Like, why are you walking around so mad? You think that because she's gonna be able to defend Fessy, you? Because Fessy had the Jordan? opportunity to throw them in and he didn't. Guess what? Early in the should've. season when you had a hundred billion rookies? Yep. Let's be honest, they had the easy choice when they were in power. At this point, there's no easy choices. Like, I'm sorry. Stop talking about, oh, you could have picked somebody else. No, we've all seen this. Big alliances, Fuck teams of friends that get later on in, into the game and it's to the point where they have to eat each other. It's never pretty, but Lord knows we live for this shit. 
All we I heard for it. was like, wah, wah, yeah, wah. Fe- yeah. <laughs> Fess, Fessy don't need to be whining. I said, look, he's what, six nine, six seven, two hundred and some plus pounds. If you are that confident, you be like, okay, shit, you you vote, okay. I respect that because look, the the numbers are dwindling, and I understand your gameplay. But he wants to whine. Let him whine and do all this. No, this is a game. They're playing the game just like you playing the game. Now shut the fuck up and know your role. Boom. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and move on to the elimination. Um, Jay Michelle are like immediately voted down. Like we all knew it was going to be. It, it's just <laughs> the way it was. cover of no shit news. <laughs> so now we get to the draw. And Nelson and Norris, they get the draw by default. And it was the exact thing that he didn't want to happen because he didn't want to have to make the decision between uh, picking Fessy and Mariah or picking Olivia and Horacio. Now, if you would have asked me in a million years who he would have picked to save, it would not have been Fessy. It would have been right. the beautiful blonde girl who's right. giving me ass. Right. <laughs> and at this point, I'm just like, oh, wow. <laughs> Obviously, he uh. fucking loves Fessy. The, I mean, this, I mean, it was so fucking ridiculous. It threw, I was speechless when it happened. I couldn't believe it. Like, you saved Fessy. You saved one of your biggest competitors. You saved the person. <sighs> who sent you home on purpose because he decided to vote himself in. It wasn't even that somebody picked him. He voted himself in. I'm sorry. I'm mad. Was, Ooh, I'm heated. Nelson's so stupid. So I was completely taken aback by his choice. It didn't make any sense um, <laughs> for his game. It didn't make any sense socially. It does. He gets no immediate benefit. It's not like fucking uh, uh, Fessu has been winning all season and can protect you. He hasn't done nothing for you this season. And everybody looks at you like you're a fucking moron. Like, everybody's like, what the hell? The face of the entire crowd was probably the face of everybody out who was watching, who hasn't seen the spoilers. To me, this is one of the biggest bonehead mistakes that Nelson has ever made outside of throwing himself in for Corey. That was stupid. Even yeah. though he had a chance to win, I wouldn't have done it. I mean, it's just... Maybe yeah. his hair's too tight. No, maybe he should I, take the no. braids out. Nelson really said... <laughs> Yo, Nelson, Nelson said, listen, I know we got the dagger. He looked Olivia in the face and said, look, look, baby, I'm feeling you, but his bros before hoes. <laughs> that's what Literally. Bros that's, what bros. That's, what he said. that's what he just said. That's basically, yes. And, uh, and yes, you know what? I, I, I hope that man gets no more pussy for the rest of, for the, rest of the season. Yes, he's going to say chicks before dicks. Oh, yo, you think Olivia, you think Olivia is going to give him some ass after this? No. No, not at all. No. You're not getting it. You any saw ass. the look on her face, like this motherfucker yeah. did you wrong, and, and you you're gonna what? send me in. She okay. was so fucking classy about it too. She was just like, "No, he. I'm sure he made the decision that he thought was best for his game. I didn't take it. Per- so fucking classy. Nelson did. Nelson know. does not no, deserve. Well, it. Not in the interview. She's know. like, I don't understand why he did this, but you know, I understand what... he's doing what he needs to do for his game. But and I don't understand why he did it. Hook. She, she could have said she a did. lot more worse shit. Right. But she could have said she could have been real fucked up about it. This was about as good as he could have hoped. And I think that speaks to Olivia's character some. And I know I said I felt some kind of way about her because I felt like Olivia, I felt like Horacio is in love with her. And I feel like she friend zoned him. And I still get that feeling, but I'm telling you, out of the rookies, Horacio is one of the best performers and Olivia is one of the best personalities. And she can perform. She's going to be on the challenge for a bit. Yes. Unless she decides to to walk away from it, which I hope she doesn't, yeah. because she is one of the strongest female competitors Absolutely. that we've seen God, in a long time. Please, 
I just hope there's nothing racist in her past tweets. Right. That's what I'm <laughs> no, oh afraid God. of. Dude. <laughs> but let me bring really it hope. up. No. If you're hearing this, Olivia, go no. through your Twitter feed and delete anything that's even semi-controversial. I'm right not gonna now. say all that because you know that's who you are. That's who you are. No, but no, seriously? semi-controversial shit. Get rid of it. I don't. I don't need her to have any semi-controversial shit. I God. need her to be done because so, so I be like, like her. You guys like Olivia? Look what she said about black people when she was 15. Like, oh, we we can't afford to have any more solid females leave i mean the the female talent pool is really small. not that it's not great, that great. Is, yeah. because i mean cara and you know that crop there's no more crop of those that that that's that it's never going to be ever again I, I, and as much I'm as sorry. you don't like her ashley's a really great competitor Cara no. is an amazing competitor. No, no. Like Laurel Ashley has now. seemed to go on a decline. You about to make me go off on you with Ashley uh, comment. No. Sh- Yo, what's up with you disregarding these female wins? I said Ashley. Ashley is the luckiest N- champ. You know what? You said the, the same thing about Amber's win. So shut up. Amber, I mean, you can't. We she was with CT though, but you. She's and one, Ashley, and she's four no. one in eliminations. A- Ashley, and no, no. She gets Ash- the job done. I'll take Amber off she, Ashley any it, day. We and have twice seen on that a partner can be an anchor or they can be an asset. Like I said, Amber was an asset I'll to take, CT. I'll take Amber over him? Ashley. Every, He's any mad day. that there's female winners and partner challenges. No, I'm not mad at that. I'm mad that y'all are giving props to Ashley. I am not an Ashley fan. I what did I Ash- want a re- a you? recount. A recount. We need to recount on the win. Are you win. mad because she a took the money from the Hunter? No, I'm not mad at that. I'm mad at the fact that how did she win Evasion? That don't add up to me. Go back and watch Evasion right. and tell me that's, how they won. That's another conversation for another pod. Let's go ahead and finish up on Let's this elimination. Have an entire fight. So over Nelson this. is saving Fessy. Uh, Olivia looks hurt, but she pretty much absolves Nelson of any and all wrongdoing. Uh, today's elimination is called Spun Out. Uh, it's pretty much a puzzle. You know, it's that block puzzle we can only place one and the bigger one can't be in the other one. Only. The person who's pushing the wheel can't see, and the person who's on the wheel is spinning in a circle. This was not a fair elimination. The whole entire house was against Jay and Michelle. Uh, They were intentionally loud, so they could not hear. Uh, Olivia and Horacio gets the win. Am I saying it right? It's Horacio, right? Horacio. Horacio gets the win. Um, They probably would have got the win without, without the house help. but. They seem to have a better strategy. Well, I think they didn't really know how to do the puzzle. It was going to be a long shot anyway. Most, Jordan said it best. He said everybody who was in this draw, he feels like could beat, um, you know, he feels like that they can beat Jay and Michelle. And he's not wrong. I mean, what was the alternative? Narisa Nelson or Fessy Mariah? It was going to, it was, it was looking tight for them no matter what came up. I mean, I don't know. Nelson might have fucked it up if he ended up there. Cause he, he might have. Uh, he might have. But he's if good Marisa Smart, but... if Marisa Smart would have put Nelson in a fucking trap in, in the <laughs> little spinny thing. But <laughs> once again, we're having an elimination where home court advantage is a thing. Uh, we've we've seen it. it. It's it's always been in the challenge. It's always been a part of the challenge. Having the house against you and rooting against you or rooting for you has tangible effects. How do we feel about that? I mean, I think us, uh, there were a lot of people saying, oh, there's little asterisks by two of Olivia Honoracio's wins. One, because of they got help with the turbo one and they got help with this one. Um, it just seems to be funny that the the two, <laughs> that the, the two most hated people ended up against Horacio and Olivia. <laughs> but um, I mean... It is what it is. Do I agree with it? No. I really wish that they could win it without house help because that would stop people from basically taking away from how well Olivia and Horacio did. And the funny thing is, is Horacio didn't know that they won. Like, that was the funniest shit ever because the horn sounded. He's like, who won? 
who won? And he's like, <laughs> we won? Shit! He didn't even realize that he won that that elimination. But, um, It was yeah. super great to see his reaction. He, he's very genuine, super sweet. He's such a baby. Like, it's just a baby. I just want to pinch his cheeks. And be like, oh, you're such a cute little bobo. I, I, but, I think Horacio is going to be pretty good at this game. I yeah. think he's if he uses his baby face and his innocence right, he's going to get the ladies on his side really quickly. Um, agreed. But I want to I want to say this: you are in a competition, regardless of what's going on around you. You need to stay focused at hand and try to find a way to win. It, it, bump this up like, oh, it's unfair event. No, you are in the game for a million dollars. If you have that distraction. You have to find that way to win the game yourself. Um, uh, Michelle and Jay couldn't find it. That's why they lost. Uh, Horatio and Olivia, they did their thing, even though they had help. Don't get me wrong. But if you are a true competitor, you will find a way to win, regardless of what distractions around you. I'm inclined to agree. Uh, I'm totally okay with the house help. It's an element of the challenge. Uh, we've seen eliminations that take place kind of like an exile and nobody is out there. Those are great too. I'm not against starting to mix some of those into these things. Uh, you know, just for a change of pace every once in a while. But I'd the love house to see another you, exile situation. 100%. Um, and, and we saw one recently when it was um, Nani versus Ashley. Oh, and yeah. And that and that was great to watch. That was absolutely great to watch. So, but I'm I'm okay with it. It's it's always been a part of the challenge, good or bad. It is what it is. And planning for that can help you because if you're a big guy, like you know, if you you know, if you're a vessel and you pull a puzzle, having a house on your side might be a good thing if you can get that help. So it's just part of the game. We've seen it. Um, Olivia, Olivia, and Horacio come back to the house. They're the winners. That's going, to conclu- that's going to conclude today's episode. Let's go ahead and rank it. Where do you guys put today's episode? One to five stars. What do you got? I mean, I, I actually want to give it like four. Maybe yeah, four. You know what? That's four high and a half. for you. I want to do four and a half because of the shock and awe of Nelson losing his booty because of the fact that he wants to be a moron and I just seeing his gameplay just go right down the tubes like oh god you're so fucked you're so fucked but um I liked the daily I I enjoyed that it was fun it was funny um and the elimination was lame at the end of the day but I I loved the way Horacio celebrated and the way he just didn't even realize he won and honestly it was a feel-good kind of Situation, even though I really didn't like seeing Michelle and Jay go home because I actually really did enjoy them um, this season. And I think they were playing really well. It just bit them in the ass at the end of the day. Oh, Jay's on my shit list, but not for anything challenge related. Oh, God, what happened? He's the reason why we didn't have our uh, guests come on this week. Oh, okay. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. But I'm like, yeah. he always interviewing people. But <laughs> so, so, Rob, where do you um, put this episode? I'm going to say this first. Great minds think like me and Becky. We are on the line. We're four done. Four and a half. She told we're, done. we're done. No, we aren't. Don't girl, look at me. You know you love me, girl. Go on. Stop playing. But anyway, four and a half. I give it four and a half. I enjoyed the daily. Um, the only thing that I knocked points off was for Chelsea shoes and Fessy. <laughs> Fucking ridiculous. Famous. That that hands down knocked it down to a four and a half for me because I started laughing hard when I saw that. So four four and a half out of five. Yes, it was almost a perfect episode for him. Yes, I loved it. Yes. So you're both wrong. This episode was three and a half stars. Even though I would say it's it's a high three and a half stars, close to four, but not quite. Uh, the daily was magnificent, beautifully shot. It looked good. It was great. Uh, it was tense. They did a great job with that. But drama in the house was kind of lacking. Look, look at the drama. Fessy's mad because oh, Anissa put me in, and I could have voted her in. And fuck out of here. 
Um, Norris said the way Jordan performs is attractive, and even though she's probably not wrong, I thought it was kind of gross to hear. So, oh, did you see the preview? <gasps> oh, no, and I don't, I don't want to. Um, so that wasn't great. Uh, the daily, I mean, the elimination was kind of lackluster, and the only other source of drama was. Nelson, oh, who who am I going to save? The person who burned me a couple of seasons ago or the person who I'm currently fucking? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, that was just, that was irritating. Well, Amber also had a little bit of drama with Michelle, too. I did, as you can see, I didn't even bring it up this episode because it's it not even worth talking about. So minuscule. They're beefing over a hug. Just stop. But it also that just shows, shows how su- you how your brain gets in the challenge house. Yeah, but but it also shows how sweet Amber is. She, you know, not like she was out there looking for blood or whatever. She just got a weird vibe for a second, and they talked it out, and it got settled. There's really no reason to even bring it up during today's episode. Like I just totally skipped that whole storyline. I'm because- really getting over. It's just it's starting to really start to piss me off. The Amber hate, like I. Do oh yeah, it's completely unnecessary. Get it? Amber doesn't get it, deserve it. L- listen, yo, look at me. Look at me. Amber's a champ, and the people you like aren't. And fucking deal with it. Live with it. She's earned it. Oh, she was partnered with CT. No, CT was partnered with her. She carried CT to this win. Deal with that. Well, that's going to conclude our episode. Thank you guys all for watching. Thank you all for listening. Make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter at LWC Podcast. Follow us on Facebook and TikTok at Love War Challenges. Cop your official Love War Challenges gear at shop.lwcpodcast.com. And our website is lwcpodcast.com. Not that we ever fucking upload anything on there. Get your customizable <laughs> challenge gear and accessories at to. shopthechallenge.com. And make sure you listen to Love Wood Challenges podcast on Apple and Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, or your favorite podcast app. And make sure you subscribe to us on YouTube. Once again, before I get up out of here, big shout out to Gamer. Big shout out to Pink Rose. Big shout out to the Unbothered Facebook group. Big shout out Nikki. Big shout out Caitlin. Big shout, shout out um, OKC. And big shout out to... And also a big shout out Shannon. Big shout out to anybody who had us in their most played uh, podcast on their Spotify. Fucking love to see it. Even though... 73% seventy three percent of people listen to us on Apple Podcasts. That's what the analytics tell us. And for some reason, we're really popular in Israel. I don't know why. You motherfuckers must not follow my fucking Twitter that much. So that's <laughs> fucking hilarious. That's uh, funny. <laughs> I'm done. But, yo, that's going to do it for us. Subscribe on YouTube. Once again, I am MTV Malik. He is Robert Stewart Jr., she is Becky at GIF, Master Bex. This is Love War Challenges. Good night.